In this video, I'm gonna share with you how I became a model and worked with brands like Colgate, Nike, Amazon, and KFC. So I first became a model when I was 14 years old. I entered a modeling competition and came in second place. I remember growing up and hearing on the radio, you know, do you wanna be the next child star? Which was more for acting, but I remember hearing a commercial that was for a modeling competition at a mall not far from home and i asked my mom if she would take me she reluctantly did and i ended up coming in second place and after the modeling competition we were walking around the mall and we got approached by two scouts from two modeling agencies in seattle and one of them being from a scout for hefner management in seattle they approached us, gave us their card, and you know, asked if we were, in, if I was interested in signing with a local agency. So, shortly after the modeling competition, we, as a family, went up to Seattle. I met with Hefner Management, and they signed me at just 14 years old. And because I still had braces at the time, there wasn't a, a whole lot that I could do, and they knew that. So I did a couple of test shoots to build my book and build my portfolio. I remember my first test shoot, I couldn't smile with my teeth because I had braces, but I did a couple of test shoots, built my book, and didn't really do much in the first couple of years until I was 17 years old in my junior year of high school. I got the option to go to Singapore and work for an agency over there for a 90-day contract and I took it. So after I finished my junior year of high school, my mom flew with me over to Singapore to kind of get me settled and everything. This is going to be the first time that I was living away from home, living away from my family and friends. And you know, in this experience as well, I was living halfway across the world. So my mom flew over with me, helped to get me settled in the apartment that I was going to be living in. The agency put me up in a model's apartment, helped me kind of just, you know, get settled in the city and everything. And then she flew back home and I continued living in Singapore and working in Singapore for the 90 day contract. I ended up doing really well in Singapore. It was, you know, in all of the contracts that I ended up taking, this was one of my best contracts when it came to work. I worked really well there and made money from that contract. So how these kind of contracts worked, at least in my experience, these agencies in other countries like Singapore worked with my mother agency. So my mother agency was Hefner at the time, Hefner in Seattle. I was also, Hefner had me working with a scout and she placed me with the, the agency in Singapore and placed me with a couple of di different agencies as well. So this agency in Singapore then paid for my flight and paid for my accommodation. They put me up in a models apartment and gave me a weekly allowance. So then when I started working, I would pay off this debt to them. And then once I had paid them off, then I made money on top of that. So in Singapore, I worked really well and ended up taking home some money, which was really exciting, obviously being 17 years old and, you know, coming home from this trip and, you know, making money from that trip. It was, it was really exciting. So I had a really great experience in Singapore, had a really great contract there. And so when I came home, I went immediately into my senior year of high school. And just before graduating, I got the option to go to Shanghai, China for a, another 90 day contract. And I think at the time I had such a great experience in Singapore that I thought naively, I thought that, you know, all, they were all going to be the same, which I learned that they are not. <laughs> so when I got to Shanghai, I, I don't think I stopped crying for, 
for a week. I, one, had a massive culture shock. You know, Singapore is very westernized. You know, almost everyone speaks English. It's a really clean city. It's easy to get around, but Shanghai was a lot different for me. I think also my mom didn't, nobody came with me and flew over with me to Shanghai. So I flew over by myself. You know, I was still only 18. I had, you know, lived in Singapore for, you know, my 90 day contract and had that experience of living abroad and living on my own. But there was just something different about getting to Shanghai and the experience that I had there. And that first week was really hard. I remember wanting to, I remember wanting to leave. And I remember at the time, my mother agency and the scout that I was working with, they gave me the option to leave. I think I was going to have to pay like $2,000 or so to cover the cost of the flight that the agency had paid for for me. But I remember deciding to stay. And even though I didn't have a great experience in Shanghai, I also didn't work well and I didn't make money from that trip. I'm really grateful that I decided to stay because I think it really, in many ways, shaped me in who I am today. So Shanghai was my second contract. After I finished my contract in Shanghai, I immediately went off to college. I got accepted into Central Washington University in Ellensburg in Washington. And I went immediately back into to school and studied there for, I did a whole year, my freshman year. And I remember having a couple of options for the next summer and I remember not taking any of the contracts and I, I think from my experience in Shanghai, I think I just wanted to stay home and be around my family and friends and, you know, my work was not just when I was away and, you know, in Singapore and Shanghai and different con in different countries and on different contracts. I was also, I worked very frequently when I was back at home as well. So I was working a lot in Seattle and then I eventually did a fair amount of work near Portland, Oregon, where Nike headquarters is. I worked for Nike a lot. So I think at that time I just decided to stay home. I didn't want to take on another contract. I just wanted to be near my family and friends and just continue working back at home in Seattle and also down in, in Portland for Nike. And then I started my second year at college at Central Washington. And then in my second quarter, I got the option to go to Hong Kong for a 60 day contract. And so I decided to drop out of my, drop out of that quarter and go to Hong Kong. And I had such a great experience in Hong Kong. I immediately fell in love with Hong Kong. I don't know what it is. Maybe it was the people that I met or, you know, just the city in itself, but I just, I just loved Hong Kong and I had such a great time. I feel like those 60 days just went so quickly and I was a little bit sad to have to go home and to have to go back home to, you know, studying again and also living in Ellensburg. I really did not have the best experience at Central Washington University and also living in Ellensburg. It was just, it wasn't the best experience for me. I loved every opportunity that I had to get out of the town, you know, when I was back at home and when I was studying at Central Washington University, I was, you know, I had castings in Seattle. I was going home a lot. I had work in Seattle and in, in Portland and for Nike. And so I was just doing lots of trips, you know, back and forth. And so I finished my second year at Central Washington University and I decided that I was going to drop out and take a gap year. That's what I sold it to, to my parents. <laughs> I ended up taking a 
gap year to pursue modeling full time because I remember at the time also realizing that I didn't have forever in my career as a model. You know, there's obviously models that are working in their 40s and their 50s and, you know, obviously later in life. But I think in your early teens and your early 20s, in your 20s, that's when you're really able to kind of take hold of this opportunity that you have as a model. And that's what I did. I also knew that I could always go back to school. I remember <laughs> my thinking at the time was, you know, colleges, universities, like they were always going to want to take my money. So it didn't matter if I was 20 years old or 40 years old, like I could always go back to study. And I remember my parents and, you know, people telling me like, it's only gonna get harder though, but I just didn't really care. I knew that I wanted to, you know, take this opportunity that I had to take on different contracts in, in Asia and to pursue my career working as a model at this time. So I dropped out of Central Washington University to pursue modeling full time. And my next contract was in Bangkok, Thailand, which I later learned that, you know, every market is different. So, you know, and this goes for how you get around to castings and work and the castings in itself and the work in itself. So, you know, in Singapore, my agency would send me texts for castings and work and I would have to figure out how to get around the city, how to get to the castings or get to the work. And most often I relied on, on public transportation, you know, riding the subway or the bus. And I really loved that. I loved getting to figure out how to get around this city. And I learned that I was actually pretty good at it as well. I actually had, you know, I had many experiences where I had other models, you know, follow me around to different castings and works because you would oftentimes be going around the, the city and you would, you know, see other people, girls or guys, and see that they were, you know, maybe a model, they would maybe be holding a book that you could see that they were a model or you kind of just tell. And so you would kind of, you know, are you going to this casting? Are you looking for this place? And I had a couple of models that would, you know, oftentimes follow me around because I was pretty good at directions and figuring out where to go. So that was the experience that I had in Singapore. It was more you figure out how to get around yourself. I had that experience in Bangkok as well, as well as when I was working in the Philippines and, and Hong Kong as well. But Shanghai was a lot different. So in Shanghai, and this is what I didn't really like as well, was that the agency that I was working for at the time at night, every night they would slip a piece of paper under our apartment door that would have this sheet of paper that would say, you know, all the call times for different castings and work and have all the different models. And, you know, you would, you would see, okay, I have to be ready at 8 a.m. for like, you know, the, the van is going to pick us up at this time and how it would kind of work in, in Shanghai, at least for in this agency that I would, that I worked for, this van would pick us up in the morning and it would take us around, you know, there was maybe 10 models in the van and someone that worked for the agency as well in the front seat with the driver and they would take us around to different castings and you know it depend each day it would depend on how many castings we would have but sometimes they would be you know upwards of 10 castings in a day so we would just you know go from one casting to the next and pile out of the van and go inside and you know oftentimes i remember just lining up in a line and the casting director would just, you know, look at us up and down and just, you know, say yes, no, yes, no. And I didn't really work well in, in Shanghai. And so I got no's a lot. And I remember this rocking my confidence, but also in the end building my confidence 
rocking it because you know obviously working in the modeling industry you're going to get rejected and hear no a lot and so that's what kind of rocked my confidence was like oh another casting oh another no but also in the end building my confidence because I had to learn how to have a thick skin and had to learn how to you know embrace myself for who I am and know that even if a casting director or an an agency or someone told me no or didn't like my look or it wasn't the right fit I still knew that I was beautiful and I still knew that I had a lot to offer even though I might not be the right fit or be picked for this certain job so in Shanghai that was kind of how it worked you know we would get in a van go from casting to casting and I also found that this didn't I didn't like the way that this worked because I wasn't as active you know, I would get into a van early in the morning and just sit in the van and be taken around to all these castings. Whereas in, you know, places like Singapore or when I was, you know, in Hong Kong, in, in different places, I would have to get around the city myself. And I liked that. I liked that I had to, I was walking a lot and I just liked that experience. So that's what I found really difficult in Shanghai but my third contract was in Bangkok Thailand and as well different different markets different places had different ways of doing things and I remember not really liking the way that things were done in Bangkok in Thailand with castings a lot of castings would take a lot of time like hours and I remember just feeling like it was such a waste of time because in Bangkok it's known to be a commercial more of a commercial market and what that means is they're looking for more commercial models like myself and shooting more commercials whether that is actual like film commercials or just print commercials and when you go to, in my experience, when I would go to castings, especially for these commercials, they would do full hair and makeup that would often take, you know, a while, depending on how many people they had doing hair and makeup. They would do full hair and makeup and actually have you kind of run through the script that they had for the commercial that they were gonna be shooting. So you would oftentimes go like frame by frame and kind of basically do like a test commercial for them so they could see you in the commercial that they would be shooting. And I just remember it just feeling like such a waste of time. And I just didn't like that. I didn't like that for myself. I just didn't like the way that, you know, how they did things there. So I ended up getting out of that contract in Bangkok and, and leaving early and actually then taking a contract, another contract in, I went back to Hong Kong. So I did that, con and my next contract in Hong Kong, again, had another amazing experience. I loved Hong Kong. I was working pretty well. And I, then I went back home and then my next contract was, I went to the Philippines. So I'm a quarter Filipino and I think that was kind of always the, you know, idea was to get me to, you know, take on a contract in the Philippines because I'm part Filipino. They, you know, thought I was going to work really well there and I ended up working pretty well there actually. And I took on a 90 day contract with an agency and because I was working pretty well and I, at the time I actually enjoyed being in the Philippines as well. So I finished that contract and then decided to freelance. And, you know, looking back, I'm so grateful that I gave myself that experience of working as a freelance model because, you know, working as a model in itself, you're not an employee of the, of the agency that you're working for. You're classified as a independent contractor. So, you know, the money that you're making from modeling can be really great, but you also have to factor in that you're paying your own taxes and everything. So, you know, 
when I decided to work as a freelance model, it also gave me the opportunity of, you know, kind of seeing a different side to how things worked. You know, when you're working for an agency, they're the ones that are scouting out the, the castings and the jobs and booking you for jobs and, you know, organizing everything for you, collecting the payments, paying you out and everything. And when you're working as a freelance model, at least in my experience, I was the one that was having to find, you know, the castings to go to, the work, you know, making connections with people. I was also the one having to, you know, track, you know, the money that I was making and collect payments and, and all the things. Even though I was working a lot when I was in the Philippines, when I finished my time there and converted the money that I had made back to US dollar, I didn't make that much, which was kind of a bummer. But again, I, I never saw modeling as, you know, the one all be all kind of, you know, I didn't have that mindset. I knew that I wasn't going to be working as a model forever. I did always see myself, you know, going on and doing something afterwards, which I ultimately did, but I just treated it as, you know, I'm doing this for fun. And also, you know, what I loved most about my experience working as a model was the ability to travel and to take on contracts in different countries. I did a contract in Bangkok. I left that contract early. I went back to Hong Kong. I did another contract in, I went to the Philippines. I worked for an agency. I did a contract for 90 days. I worked freelance. And then I took another contract. I gave Bangkok and Thailand another try, did another contract there, which ultimately ended up being my last contract there because I again found that I wasn't working that well there and I think at this time I started to kind of feel like I was ready for the next thing I think at this time I was 22 so I had been modeling for five years you know I had taken on multiple contracts you know I was working during contracts and also working back at home in the States and, you know, studying full time. And I remember at this time and being in Bangkok, just kind of feeling like I was ready for that next thing. So after my, my contract in Bangkok, I ended up flying back home and I ended up deciding that I was going to go back and get my associate's degree, which is your two-year degree, to then use that to apply to another university to get my bachelor's degree. I hope you've enjoyed this video on getting to hear how I became a model and my experience working in the modeling industry. If you have any questions on how I became a model or my experience working as a model, just drop them in the comments or you can send me a DM over on Instagram at Lauren Tamayo. And if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and make sure to subscribe to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.